Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Jake Bro, and on this channel we talk about finance and investing issues. And in today's video, we got a good one because we're gonna go over the concept of short selling. In a later video, I might do a specific example on my Schwab brokerage account, how to short sell. But in this video, let's just cover the concept so that people understand the risks and rewards. Now, short selling or going short does not mean that you take a short period of time position in a stock. It actually means that you're short in that you don't have that stock. So let's first talk about normal trading and what that is. There's natural volatility in the market. The share price of companies and stocks goes up, it goes down, we all expect this. Now, normal trading, you try to buy low when there's a good valuation or a good deal out there, and then sell high. Once it's appreciated in value, that difference is your profit. I feel like the concept of buy low, sell high, everyone gets this. Short selling is actually the inverse of that, and this is used when you feel like the market is heading for a downturn, or potentially you have analysis or some kind of sophistication and expertise to know that a company currently is overvalued and you think the price will go down in the future. If you think the price will go down in the future, you shouldn't be buying shares now. So you can't do your normal buy low, sell high if you think share prices are going down in the near future. Now, most investors, normal investors, would then just hold on to cash. They would increase their cash reserves waiting for a dip. But you have another option, and that option is called short selling. And if you watch other YouTube videos, they describe it as sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low. However, this is confusing to people because isn't that the same thing as normal trading? I mean, if I'm selling high up here, aren't I buying low down here? Isn't it the exact same thing? And no, it isn't because you're actually selling something that you do not own, something that you do not have. So rather than the concept of sell high, buy low, you're actually borrowing high, and then uh, we call it covering, covering the sale, covering low, borrowing high and covering low. And you do this when you think something is overvalued and you want to sell it now, and then later buy it back when it's cheaper and then return it to the person that you borrowed from. So who would do this? Well, all of the biggest investment banks, I recommend either Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, they all allow short selling if you are approved for a margin account with your brokerage account. Now, why does um, Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, and most other brokerage accounts, why do they allow people to borrow their stocks in order to short sell it? Well, they often have fees associated with short selling. Definitely uh, make sure that you're getting a good rate or a good charge on the fee whenever you do this. You also might be paying interest, the equivalent of a 2% to 20% APR for however many days, weeks, months, whatever, that you're, you're waiting to buy back the stock to return it. You might be asking where the stock's coming from. Most of these major banks run mutual funds or ETFs. They allow people to borrow shares from those uh, ETFs and mutual funds in order to short sell them. And they're not really worried about people doing this because if a stock in one of their accounts misses a dividend, you're also required to pay that back. Brokers can also, these large banks, can force you to cover your sale at any time. Now, they don't wanna do this because this, uh, this is not good customer service, uh, but they do legally have the right to force you to buy back any kind of stock or equity that you short sold because it's technically still theirs. So let's do a comprehensive example to illustrate a full cycle of short selling. And let's say you're sitting at home watching the share price for a company uh, XYZ, their share price goes up to $100 and you're saying there's no way this company is worth $100. It's grossly overvalued right now. I'm going to short sell it. So you log on to your uh, brokerage account that has a margin account enabled and you short sell at $100. What you did is you borrowed uh, that stock from your brokerage account. So you sold it for $100 and you actually have that money in your account right now, but you have to hold on to it and maybe you hold on to it for days or weeks or months, but the share price of the company 
does go down and it's fallen to $90. And you say, this is perfect. I think this is what the company is actually supposed to be valued at now. So I am going to buy back the shares that I sold and return them to my broker. So we covered our short sale and we bought it back at $90, returns the stock to our broker, and we net positive uh, $10 or 10% on this trade. Now, obviously there might be a small fee or small interest, or maybe you had to pay a dividend if a dividend was missed, but whatever that difference between that sale and buy, that's yours to keep. And let's say once again, the share price of this company shoots up again, it's now at $150 and you're saying there's no way that it should be valued at 150. You then log on to your um, brokerage account and you short sell it again. You're borrowing the stock, you sell it at 150. You then wait a certain amount of time and it goes back to, it goes back down to 120. And you're saying 120, good enough. I think that's close to what I value it at. You then buy it back, you cover your sale to return it to your broker. The difference is $30 per share, however many shares you bought. So that's a 20% profit on your sales. If you got that, then short selling might seem pretty cool. However, there are risks associated with short selling and I definitely need to explain these to you. The first one is the long-term average of the S&P 500, close to the total stock market return with dividends reinvested, it's about 9.8% a year. If you just wanna buy and hold for a period of decades, you can roughly on average per year expect to earn 9.8%. Now, if you're betting against the market, uh, you're, you're swimming upstream in, to a certain extent. So the longer you are in a short sell position, in my opinion, the riskier it becomes because naturally the market on average rises over time. Now, obviously you should have your own analysis and you should have specific information why you think a company is overvalued at its current share price. So you shouldn't be relying on averages or generalizations when you short sell. Additional risks to short selling is when you normally trade, you can only lose 100% of the stock you bought. If I bought a company share for $100 and that company goes bankrupt, the, uh, the valuation of the shares gets wiped out down to zero, I lost $100. That's kind of a bummer. However, your losses on a short sale are potentially unlimited. Sometimes they'll say they're infinite. To me, infinite means a big number. I like the word unlimited because it means it can just keep going. So let's illustrate this. With normal trading, if you bought a share of company XYZ for $100, then it could go to zero. The company could go bankrupt, the equity in the shares could be wiped out. You could potentially lose $100. However, if you buy and hold long term, your profit is is unlimited. It could keep going up forever. You know, if you bought Apple or uh, Amazon stock 20, 20 years ago, you're doing pretty good. Uh, but when you short sell something, the best you can do is a 100% gain. So if you bought company XYZ at $100, you short sold it and it, uh, it, it went bankrupt, it got wiped out, the share price went to zero. Congrats, you get to keep that $100. I don't know what the process uh, would be. I guess you would technically have to buy it back for pennies or maybe at zero and then return it to your broker. But the point is, is the difference would be almost 100%. However, what if you short sell a company, you short, sell, you, sh you short sold Apple or Amazon 20 years ago, and the share price just kept going up and up. You know, it, 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 it doubled to 200, it tripled to 300, it, it quadrupled to 400, your profits, your, your losses keeps going up the longer you hold it while the share price keeps appreciating in value. Another way to visualize the risk versus reward is the area under the line is your potential profit when short selling. However, the area under the line over here is your potential for profit when you just do normal trading, uh, you know, buy low, sell high. So the risk is there. It's definitely risky. Short selling is not for everyone. I definitely need to make that clear to people in this video. Additional risks to short selling is your broker, as I previously stated, can cover your sale at any time. They can demand that you buy the stock back. 
Normally they don't want to do this unless they have a very good reason. One of those reasons could be that uh, the share price has gone up so much that you no longer have uh, enough funds in your margin accounts to cover the sale. So in your uh, brokerage account, if, if you have uh, margins trading enabled, you must maintain a certain number of funds to cover that sale. So many margin accounts will require that you have between 30 and 50% of the sale in your account. What they're basically doing is we think you might, uh, you might lose between 30 and 50% on this trade from the stock going up. So we're requiring you to hold that. However, what happens when you've lost so much on a short sale that you can no longer cover it in your margin account? This creates something called a short squeeze. And maybe you've seen uh, graphs like this on the internet. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly explain what's happened here. So basically the stock was falling and there were people short selling it, assuming that it would continue falling. However, it made a turnaround and it started going up and it started going up and up and up and up. And when it hit this point, uh, short sellers were being squeezed because maybe they didn't have enough funds in their margin account to cover their losses. So it automatically triggered uh, buying back the shares for whatever they were holding in their account. And that's what happens when you see these huge vertical spikes. It's uh, short sellers getting squeezed and they lose a lot of money in these scenarios. So at its core, short selling is just an inverse trading tool and it can be very useful. Now, when I first was learning about short selling, I thought to myself, is this a good thing? Should people actually be betting against a company performing well? Don't we want companies to always go up? Like shouldn't stocks always go up? Well, that's not how capitalism or the free market works. Stocks should go up and down. And short selling is actually a very useful tool to reduce volatility in the stock market. When people buy low and sell high, it actually helps the, the share price of a company uh, so there's less volatility. So if it's you know going up and down in wild swings, when people are normally trading, it helps reduce volatility so you get a more flat, more straight, more predictable share price for a company. When people are short selling, they're actually doing the exact same thing to help reduce volatility in the market. When they think a share, when a company's share price is overvalued, they sell when demand is high. You know, if the share price is going up, that means everybody wants to buy it. However, the short sellers know that there's uh, ex investor exuberance and that people are making a huge mistake. So they're selling uh, and, and relieving some of that buying pressure. Then when the share price falls and nobody wants to buy the stock because they're pessimistic now, something bad happened, Short sellers are actually helping the share price by jumping back in when, uh, the buy, when, when the demand on buying goes down. Once again, this is very helpful for a company and uh, it also helps long-term investors, people who are buy and hold. When there's less volatility in the market, less volatility in a share price, this actually gives investors greater confidence in the company. So short sellers, I don't know what percent of, uh, of daily transactions in the market are short sales, but they do help reduce volatility. Additionally, in a funny way, short sellers are actually helping bad investors. Most people who buy and sell individual stocks do a terrible job. And when the share price is going up, they're buying because it's going up. And when it's falling, they're panicking and they're selling as it's going down. There's a lot of uh, financial experts and people who manage, uh, manage people's wealth who don't want people making uh, their own decisions because people make emotional decisions. People want to buy the hot stock as it's rising and as it's falling, they, they panic and sell. So a lot of people who buy and sell individual stocks do it wrong. They buy high and they sell low, which is literally the worst thing you can do. People who are short selling are actually helping those people by cooling off a stock when it's overheating and helping it rebound when it falls. And there you have it guys. I hope that was a good explanation. In my next video, I'm gonna log on to my Schwab investor account and show you specifically what the interface looks like and what the process is to short sell a stock. Hope you check that out.
And there you have it, guys. That's all I got for this video. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing. I talk a lot about finance and investing issues. And if you have any comments or questions, or if I didn't explain something well, leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until the next video, take care.